today's example is going to be our little kit that we've put together for you. Purchase this frame, the reptile fabric, which comes in four different colors. We're going to be using two of our chalk colors, chalk paint colors by Annie Sloan. Uh, you can choose whichever colors you like. We're going to start with old white and olive green, and we're going to use our wood icing texture of paste and our spatula. And then the only thing we need extra, oh, this is the four ounce. We do not sell this individually. This only comes in kits. And we're gonna use a spray bottle of water. Okay, so we're gonna disassemble our frame. I'm going to just use Two of the reptile fabrics. It comes in black, which is a very small diamond shape, and this is just mesh. And you get all four. You get a yard of each color. We use the black normally for snake skin, and then the purple is just a little larger, and we use it for usually fish scales, and then we use the white for what we call alligator. Like these three, these are my favorites because they're very flexible, so when you're doing a curved piece of furniture, they wrap around really nice. This is our alligator. This blue is the same as our white, except it's a stiffer fabric. It holds its shape. Some people like that, especially if they're doing a wall or something. So we are going to put the white aside because we're going to use a combination of the snake skin and the fish. Then we're going to set our paints aside because we won't use those till later. All right. Very simple. This is an unfinished piece of wood. Wood icing goes great on unfinished wood. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and spread the paste nice and thick. I'm not going to do it all over. I'm going to kind of skip some of the edges. This is a very random pattern. You can do one section at a time, or if you're pretty handy with this stuff, you can do the whole thing all at one time. I want this to look old and weathered, so I'm not covering the whole thing. See how I've got some voids here and there. Okay, so the fabric needs to be wet. So I spray it a little bit with some water. I spray the paste with some water. And then with the, the black, I like to use the edges to my advantage for the curvy stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it a little bit in the paste. The paste kind of holds it for you. And then I'm going to start spreading it out. I'm going to bury that into the paste. And then I want to add a little bit more dimension, so I take a little bit more paste over the top of the mesh. Like I say, I'm doing this randomly, so there's no right or wrong on this. And I even want these wrinkles in here.
Then I'm going to pull this up. It's going to leave all the... Now we're going to skip over to the, the larger diamonds mesh. We're going to... I like to lay the edges right next to the other one so you get that little bit of a dried up snaky skin look. Add a little more over the top so we get the dimension we're looking for. this side do the same thing basically I like the wide diamonds on the edge of something like this because that clarifies what you're going for Pull that off. I'm just going to stick this right back down in here. This section here I didn't feel like looked as good as I wanted it to. Basically, we're done with this. Now we're going to let it dry. This is all dry and ready to go. You can see the raised relief we got here. I'm going to, you see we get lots of little nubbies and things like that that you don't want. So I'm going to take one of these sanding blocks. I think this is pretty coarse. careful when you're using one of these coarse ones that you don't make a scratch. If you're going to stain it, it'll, it'll show up. And we're going to paint it so it's not really going to matter that much. Use a brush to get all the dust out. Then I like to have a little cloth under here or some, not a cloth, this is a paper towel. That way, I can just throw my dust away. And I got a clean surface to work on. I'm going to pour my Annie Sloan chalk paint into a, we're using olive, into a separate container. I think that'll be plenty. And I'm going to put a pretty thick coat on this. sure you fill in all the little crevices. Okay, we're going to allow this to dry and we're going to, first we'll touch up all the places we missed, but then it would take about probably 20 minutes to 30 minutes to let this dry and then we'll come back and finish. We've got a few places we probably need to touch up, but we'll do that off camera. Okay, our paint is dry. We went ahead and painted the back side of it and the front side. Now I'm going to wax it with clear and dark wax. But first, I wanted to talk about our brushes that we have here. These are Annie Sloan's amazing paint brushes. 
They come in small, medium, and large. These brushes will save you so much time and so much energy. They lay the paint down so nice. And on top of it, they hold a lot of paint. So you're, when you're painting a large project or even a small, you're going to dip your paintbrush in the paint and you're going to brush, 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 brush. Other, other paint brushes, you dip them, paint, dip them, paint, dip them, paint. Not with these. They hold a ton of paint. They're awesome. Wash out beautiful. They're made of uh, pure bristle. Just, just amazing brushes. Now here are her flat brushes. These are a synthetic brush. They just feel silky smooth. This is for if you want a smooth modern finish. She's got the large and she's got the small. It's another one that holds a lot of paint and just gets the job done perfectly. And then she has her two wax brushes. She has a large and she has a small. They're tapered on the end so you can get into the little crevices and the, this big one will do a large flat surface for you. This little one is for great for little projects and getting into little nooks and crannies. I would have both of these. They're just amazing tools. Okay, now we are going to, on this frame, I'm going to use clear wax and dark wax. And the wax comes in a large container of each color, and it also comes in a small container. You got the clear and you got the dark. So depending on your project, how much wax you need, you're, you're able to purchase either or. Okay, so we're going to start with the clear wax. Now, in order not to contaminate your wax, always scoop it out into a separate container like this. For this frame, I really don't think we're going to use any more than this little bit. And then I'm going to follow immediately on this project with the dark wax, because I want the dark and the clear to mesh together. But I'm only going to grab a little bit of the dark, because the dark goes a long way. set those aside. So I'm going to use her small wax brush. Now this one's fairly new so you want to knock all the loose hairs out of it if you can. You do want to do a thin coat over the whole thing. See what, you can't tell probably, but this brush with the little pointy ends on it gets down into all the little grooves and things that I'm, I'm wanting to get. And I can get down into the corners really well. And then I'm going to apply my dark wax. A lot of people like to have a separate brush for their dark and a set, uh, one for the dark and one for the light, which is great because then you never have to worry about getting your colors mixed together. I really want this dark to accent my texture. Now I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. I'm going to distress this with the dark wax on it, which brings out a lot of the texture. See, that takes it back to the wood icing color, which you would think would be, oh my god, what a mess that is. 
But you'll see when the dark wax is applied again, how that really adds a lot of texture relief to it. And the dark wax now darkens that area that was shiny white, which we don't want. We want it to look old and reptile-y. So in just a matter of a few minutes, now you've got this old crusty looking reptile frame. And then we're just going to take a cloth and kind of buff this a little bit. Then I'll probably do a little more touching up, but you can see just how cool and aged that almost looks like a real old snake skin on there. Okay, so this is basically the same frame, same reptile finish, but we painted it old white. And you can easily paint this frame, not even using half of this little bitty container of old white Annie Sloan chalk paint. It also comes in a quart size if you're doing a large project. So this is done, it's dry. Now we've decided we're gonna do this like we did the green picture frame, but we're gonna add a little bit more embellishment to it. We've got this frilly leaf stencil that we sell. And this comes in two parts. It comes all stuck together with little, I don't know what you call them, little connectors. But if you snip them off with a small pair of scissors, then you can pull this out. And you have a silhouette stencil that you can bury under the paste and pull out. Or for what we're going to do today, we're going to make a raised relief design. So we're just going to embellish a portion of this frame with a raised relief over the reptile. And we're going to use the wood icing out of the four ounce. You could easily do this frame plus this little embellishment and probably have some left over of this little four ounce container that comes with the kit. This is so simple. So what we're going to do, we've already painted this frame with the old frame, old white, already got the reptile on there and now we painted it. And we're going to sandwich this raised relief in between the paint. So I'm going to put this embellishment on here. And I like lots of texture, so I, I always give it a little spin with my trowel or spatula and then you just remove that immediately okay so we're gonna let this dry then we're gonna come back and paint it with the old white again then we're gonna do the clear and the dark wax like we did the green so we'll be back in a few all right we got our leaf on here we dried it with a hair dryer so we did get a few little cracks, which I absolutely love. That to me is not a mistake. That's a happy accident. Sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you won't. Okay, so now, like we said, we've got this all painted old white. Now we want to sand this down a little bit. Not much. It's going to be a little fragile because it's not been dried overnight. But I'm just knocking down those ridges a little bit. Nothing too too crazy. And then we're going to dust off the dust off the dust. Get rid of my dust. And then we're just going to take this little bit of old white. Probably not even going to use a smidge of this. 
paint over that. So now this is what I meant about sandwiching the stencil in between the paint. I kind of like this because it's easier to get the paint in all the little crevices if you've already got your bottom half painted. Or your first layer, I guess you could call it. All right, got that painted. We're going to wash our brush, let this dry, and we'll come back and we'll do the clear and the dark wax. All right, the leaf is dry, ready to go. So we're just going to hit this with some clear Annie Sloan wax using Annie Sloan's wax brush. This is the Basically, we're doing this the very same way we did the green one, except we have a raised reef relief design added to it. Just to show you another, another technique, a little more, a little more texture. Okay, while the clear wax is still sticky and wet. We're going to add some dart wax. Plenty of wax left in here. You can see it only took about a thimbleful to do this. I really want this dirtied up a little bit. Working hard to get the wax down in all those crevices. That's what this brush is so great for. All right. Now we're going to. Take some clear wax on a paper towel, and we're going to remove some of this dark wax on the high spots, and that's when our texture is just going to pop. Check it out, is that cool or what? It's like magic. So now we got a little more wax than what we want on here. So we're going to take a clean part of our cloth and just wipe the excess off. So there is a really rustic finish using clear and dark wax to our advantage.